going to bring up our third speaker. He is a psychology graduate from Melbourne University who likes playing music and telling people how great he is at listening. <laughs> he works in analytics in a vain attempt to impress women and cute puppies. Well, let's hope his speech goes better than that. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Jahan Gonsal Corrale. Hello. Wow, there are so many people. Just pretend they're not there. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to talk about... <laughs> and scene. <laughs> so I'm here to talk about men. So let's talk here. This is what men used to be. This is what men evolved to be. What do you see here? Well, I see big, strong, brave men surviving in a hostile environment. But truthfully, this is no longer the environment that we live in. But if you look at most men these days, this is pretty much what we're aspiring to be. We're still trying to be the biggest, the strongest, or the bravest, no matter how entirely impractical and stupid that might be. So where has that got us? Well, men are getting dumber. This is the problem. You can see that we're falling behind in school. You can see that women are getting all the master's degrees. And you can also see that we're winning all the Darwin Awards. This is not good. <laughs> we're getting so much dumber that we're essentially removing ourselves from the gene pool. So what does this mean from the perspective of evolution? Well, it means that there's now a selection pressure for us to become smarter, or at least less dumb. That'll do. So what this means is evolution has actually developed something for us. And what is that? Patrick Stewart. <laughs> The gift this man is showing here is boldness. Now, <laughs> this is the cure for male stupidity. Um, so what this is is really, I want to explain to you why this is what it is. Imagine you're on a jet plane, right? And that jet plane's going down. You're losing altitude, and you're all going to die. The plane's just too heavy. So all of a sudden, you start throwing things out, right? You empty the garbage disposal. Nothing's changed. You throw out all the cargo and luggage, nothing changes. And then you throw out all the seats, you rip them all out, all the upholstery, it's all got to go. And then finally you flatten out and you start to gain altitude again. That's essentially what Mother Nature is doing with the male species. Essentially, we're removing all the things we don't need to make us smarter. <laughs> because essentially the problem is we need a bit more real estate here. Now, there's a very popular misconception that we only use 10% of our brains that's not true, or 10% of our brain's potential, whatever that means. Once again, not true. We actually use the whole damn thing. And this happens to be the most complex structure in the known universe, and we're essentially using it to watch MasterChef and take <laughs> selfies. And we're not going to stop doing that. So we need to grow. But where? OK, well, we need to grow our prefrontal cortices so we have better executive function. We also need to grow our parietal occipital lobes so we have a better ability to, you know, process information and sensory information. And what is it? Well, essentially, male boldness, this is the growing male brain optimized for performance. <laughs> That's what it is, OK? And in ex you don't just grow your brain. You don't just get powers mentally. There's a very powerful psychological mechanism here at play. So this is how it works. Take your average male specimen. I don't know who that guy is. Now. <laughs> Careless and carefree, like most. And then, all of a sudden, the hair loss begins, as does the crucible. He freaks out. How on earth are you, gonna, ooh, how on earth are you going to attract a female with such a handicap, with such a disadvantage? And you realize that the path to salvation is self-improvement. And so you work on yourself. But you don't just work on yourself. Your brain is optimized for performance. So imagine waking up one day. This is what it is. Imagine waking up one day, and you have superhuman strength. But not, not only do you have superhuman strength, you have this incredible desire to be the best version of yourself and to be the strongest person in the universe. That's what this is. That's what we're talking about. This is the next step of human evolution, hands down. So the question is, what does this mean for the future? In 100 years, all men will be bold, hands down. The advantages of being bold will outweigh any potential disadvantages, like there are any. <laughs> <laughs> And essentially, the question I have is not, what do we do about bald men, but what do we do about men who have hair? <laughs> because the truth of the matter is, you're going to have a very, few, a very difficult time. I don't want to live in a world where a man like this over here, or, or you, 
are struggling to, be to live a life of dignity. I don't want you to be relegated to dangerous <laughs> manual labor and treated like you're worthless or expendable. You're not worthless. You're just worth less than bald people. <laughs> <laughs> One day, one day in the future, people look at men with hair on their heads and say, what, is this actually even a person? Is this a human? This is the kind of thing the lower order hominid, like maybe a baboon or a chimpanzee would have, but not a, not a human. And they look at these two and say, what, are these, are these twins? What's going on here? But I want to finish on a very important point. There's a lesson learned from recent history. You can't waste your genetic gift. If you have this gift, you have to allow it to activate itself. This is what epigenetics is all about. If it doesn't express itself, it'll literally work against you. With great power comes great responsibility. If you fight your hair loss, you will find that the mental and cognitive gains work the other way. This man here could have been a genius. <laughs> and look what happened. So let me end on this. To all you men out there with hair, I wish you all the best. The next few decades will be incredibly difficult for you. My only recommendation is that you fake your own hair loss. That is the only option available to you. Otherwise, if you're lucky, you might get a job as a janitor or a PE teacher. I don't know. Um, no offense to PE teachers. <laughs> but to all of those who are bald, I give you this advice. Boldly go forth where no man has gone before. <laughs> These are the beginning of the first day of your life. Thank you. <laughs>